the tubules of bead. I'm a medical physicist in the radiology department of University College Hospital, Ibadan. Of course, you must have been told we, there are so many of us here. Um, some of us work in radiology, some in nuclear medicine, some in um, radiotherapy, some even in dentistry, neurology, and the um, orthopedic um, surgeon department. So today, I want to look at um, sound waves in medicine. Uh, during the first day of uh, this um, um, presentation, sorry, first day of um, this event, uh, we were introduced on the use of uh, sound waves in uh, medicine. And I want to take a cue from that. Um, but basically today, I want to go into some details on um, the use of uh, sound waves in medicine. Use your two fingers. Okay, what is sound? Uh, from our secondary school experience and knowledge, even in our undergraduates, uh, we must have been, we must have learned a lot about them um, sound. The sound we are going to see today is um, still the same sound we, we all know. Sound remains um, a mechanical energy that transmits energy from one source, um, from one point um, to the other. It is different from electromagnetic um, and wave in the sense that sound requires um, a material medium for its propagation. That is why sound is um, basically a mechanical um, wave. So sound is a longitudinal wave. We all know um, the representation of a longitudinal wave. We have um, areas of um, increased um, pressure, which is um, um, compression, and um, areas of um, reduced um, pressure, which is um, rear function. Of course, we can actually represent this with a sinusoidal um, wave, a waveform, where we have um, the peak of um, the positive side, that is the peak of um, the compression having um, this uh, value here, and then uh, the peak of uh, the rear function, which um, is going to give us um, the negative um, amplitude. So basically, um, using the human beings, the audible frequency as, as um, the base for uh, classifying sound, we can um, have um, these um, three uh, types of sound, of course, uh, based on frequency. We have an infrasound, infra which, um, uh, which require which are uh, um, sounds that have a frequency less than a 20 hertz, and ultrasound, which are sound that have um, a frequency greater than, than 20 kilohertz. In between these um, two um, distinctions, we find a uh, hearing range, which is uh, from um, 20 hertz to uh, 20 kilohertz. In fact, there are so many animals um, which um, hear infrasound sound, uh, sound. We have so many of them. Elephant is an example, hippopotamus, and so on and so forth. And then for ultrasound, we have um, bats. They navigate, uh, they don't have eyes. They navigate um, with the use of um, ultrasound. It's unfortunate that uh, as human beings, we can only hear a very, very limited uh, range of um, uh, frequency. Some animals can hear from um, infrasound, if, um, uh, hear past the uh, audible frequency, and even to some extent uh, the ultrasound and um, ultrasound and frequency range. But this is just a distinction. Whenever we have um, an, um, a frequency of um, 20 hertz, of course, uh, we classify that uh, as um, infrasound. And whenever the frequency exceeds um, 20 kilohertz, that is in the region of um, ultrasound, which we shall be looking at um, briefly. So ultrasound in medicine, ultrasound in medicine is um, actually called, um, we can also call it um, ultra, um, ultrasonography, which uses a um, very, very high frequency from um, two hertz to uh, 15 um, megahertz, sorry, two megahertz to 15 megahertz to probe um, objects. They produce uh, images of the inside of objects, um, internal organs, the movement of the heart, the velocity of blood, and so many things, and which can be viewed in real time. In fact, this is one of the very, very wonderful beauties 
of an ultrasound for you to be able to view it in real time and then make um, your diagnosis. Of course, if the radiologist or the sonographer wants to make um, an image, maybe wants to take a live um, a still image um, any time, um, that can be called upon. Um, ultrasound investigation, very importantly, uh, does not um, use ionizing radiation. That is one of the major plus of ultrasound um, um, in medicine. It doesn't um, uh, require the use of um, ionizing radiation like we have in CT, in, um, mammography, and there's so many of them. So let's see how it all began. How did it began, well, begin? Also, sound began from so many inputs from uh, so many scientists, um, notably among them so many physicists in the past. You can see from um, the uh, slide we have here from um, 1822, uh, when um, Colladin actually used them um, underwater, used uh, um, sound to measure the speed of sound um, in uh, Lake um, Geneva up to the present um, um, uh, use of ultrasound there today. There are so many high points we can see in this, um, in this chart. We remember the famous, uh, or rather the infamous uh, sinking of a uh, Titanic. There hadn't been um, a way of uh, measuring um, uh, sound in water. So immediately after that um, event, uh, so many scientists, um, they went home, they went into their lab labs and they began to do um, so many um, and so many experiments as to how to determine uh, the speed of sun. Um, just about uh, three months later, uh, someone came up with um, a patent. He was able to discover how sound can be used um, to uh, measure uh, distances. In fact, that gave him rise um, to what we know today as um, um, sonar. And um, from there, down to um, the close of uh, the Second World War, where um, sound was actually used um, in, um, in submarines. So today, so much of what we know today or so much of what uh, we use today, actually, uh, we, we can't also forget uh, the work of um, the curious um, that uh, developed um, the piezoelectric um, effect. Um, so many of them, we have, um, we can't um, name, the list is endless, but these are just uh, the few ones that um, actually made a landmark and uh, contribution towards uh, the development of uh, what we know today in um, ultrasound um, imaging. So, uh, of course, uh, we are all um, students of um, physics. We want to um, just um, have a quick look at um, the brief um, physics, some of the brief, um, very, very brief um, physics of ultrasound. We are not going to bother us with uh, the so many equations that um, ultrasound them um, enjoys. Of course, uh, we have uh, so many of them here. So when you come to ultrasound and MRI, we've got, got a lot of physics. A progressive plane wave can be represented um, by this um, ILS equation. Of course, uh, we must have all come in contact with this in our uh, mathematics um, courses. And the second one, the equation of uh, continuity. Uh, the two of them can be combined to, to give us uh, the equation um, we have um, here. But actually, we can also, from the equation, we can look at uh, the pressure, amplitude, and um, intensity. And also some way is characterized um, by its intensity. Of course, uh, this gives us a measure of um, the power of an ultrasound. How much intensity, how much power does this um, ultrasound arm have? Because uh, it is uh, because whenever we want to look at um, the safety effect of um, ultrasound, we want to look at um, their um, pressure amplitudes, their intensity, and so on and so forth. So we have um, this um, relative intensity for measuring the measure of uh, relative intensity in terms of a uh, decibel. It is given as um, the logarithm, of course, um, when we say logarithm, the common logarithm of um, the incident and radiation over the transmitted um, radiation. Sorry, that should be a mistake. Sorry. It should be the transmitted radiation over the incident radiation. You just find the log of it, the log to base 10 of it, uh, and then multiply by 10. That gives us a uh, decibel value. Of course, uh, T, I, and T represent the incident and transmitted wave, um, respectively. But on a, on a serious note, we want to look at whenever we find them, um, use this equation, and we get uh, minus 3 uh, as a decibel. It represents 
a 50% loss of intensity. And this intensity is uh, very, very useful, very, very important for us, especially as a medical physicist. That uh, gives us what we know as um, half value thickness. Of course, many of us um, have come in contact with them, um, half value layer and so on. We have half value layer, we have half life. Also in sound, we have um, an equivalent, which is called um, half value thickness. It is the thickness of tissue or the thickness of any material that reduces the intensity of um, sound, or uh, basically, um, ultrasound now uh, reduces the uh, uh, ultrasound the intensity to by 50%. So when we have that minus three decibel, then it's a pointer to something very, very important. So we also know a very, very famous equation and the speed is um, given as a um, wavelength multiplied by um, a frequency. Uh, of course, we know the speed is this distance traveled by wave per unit time, and it's equal to a wavelength multiplied divided by period, which uh, basically gives us uh, this um, equation we have here, because the period is just the inverse of um, a frequency. Tissue depth and resolution play an important role on frequency of ultrasound, and the frequency of ultrasound that should be used. In fact, it is one of the major um, points um, if that must be um, considered when we want to um, um, use a probe. You want to choose probe. If you want to choose a probe that uh, you need to um, view um, tissues that are deeper inside the body, then you got to use a particular probe of a particular frequency. And if you want to just um, see this sub uh, container that is a um, very very thin layer of um, tissue, you don't need that. Uh, you also need a particular um, type of a uh, frequency. So the frequency determines. I mean, the depth of a penetration where you want the ultrasound to penetrate uh, will actually determine the type of a probe um, we will use. We're going to see that um, um, later. So we have here, this table here gives us uh, the um, speed of a sound in some um, biologic tissue and even air and water. We have air, of course, um, we should know that 330 meters per second and so on and so forth. We have a long fire. And so on. And then the last one here is that the PZT, that is the piezoelectric um, uh, material that is uh, used in the transducer of um, ultrasound. They are very, very important. So we want to uh, look at ultrasound instrumentation. The um, system, the uh, system that they uh, make up um, that comprises um, ultrasound. We have uh, the transducer or probe. In fact, uh, there should be three basic uh, components of a transducer. Any, I mean, sorry, of an ultrasound system. Any ultrasound system should have uh, these three basic components. The transducer, which is of course, um, can also be called the probe. The processing unit, which controls um, the computer and every other thing. And of course, and the display, which is the mon monitor on which you have your image, Everyone, you have your brightness image, your amplitude image, or your motion uh, mode uh, image. So this is just um, a diagram, an a diagram of um, several uh, transducers. Transducers, we have um, the covilinear type, we have um, the linear type, we have um, the phase array type, we have um, some uh, intra cavity uh, transducers. These transducers, we have uh, a cavity in the body. It can be moved down the cavity inside the body to have um, a closer look at um, the um, tissues um, that uh, surround uh, the uh, transducer. So it all depends on the application, sorry, on the procedure or the examination, the radiologist and one source uh, to perform, or the referring physician wants us to perform in which uh, the sonographer or the radiologist will now uh, choose the transducer based on the investigation. So we have um, the processing unit and the display. Of course, uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, so many knobs here. These knobs here, they do so many functions. They have um, so many functions, some, uh, some actually, like this one here, that should be the time gain uh, compensator knob. We have uh, so many other knobs here that can be tuned to I make um, a particular image in a particular depth have um, a particular um, echogenicity. When I mean echogenicity, of course, uh, we get to that um, uh, much later. So we have um, ultrasound in use. Uh, it's a very, very simple um, test, yet very, very 
important and um, conveys a lot of information. It just um, involves um, the radiologist or the sonographer placing the ultrasound and probe on the patient's um, body and um, um, the rest is um, would be displayed on the monitor um, like this. Of course, um, this one shows us that uh, we are actually using a covilinear array um, a transducer. Of course, we can see so many other things here. So we want to look at and further look at the interaction of, of ultrasound with uh, matter. How does ultrasound interact with matter? The way X-rays interact with matter is different from the way MRI interacts with matter and so on and so forth. Ultrasound also has its own um, um, differences, I mean, uh, its own uh, modalities. Ultrasound interacts with matter through the process of, uh, processes of uh, reflection, refraction, scattering, and absorption. Of course, um, because it is a wave, we expect it to reflect, to be reflected, we expect it to be refracted, we expect it to be scattered, and of course, um, um, can also, it should also be absorbed. So these um, processes determine the final image we see on the screen. Um, the amount of reflection we have on, from a particular object, from a particular body, from a particular organ, we learn, um, we show on the image in terms of um, brightness and note. If we have uh, so much a a reflection, we are going to have very, very bright um, image. And if we have a very poor reflection from an object, we are going to have uh, a very, very poor image. So these uh, interactions uh, contribute um, towards uh, the final image we see on the screen. So this um, is one of the most important um, um, symbol, um, for, I mean, um, a quantity we have in an ultrasound, which is uh, the impedance. The impedance of an ultrasound is um, calculated as um, the product of um, the density and then um, the speed. So if you multiply the density by the speed, we are going to come up with um, the um, impedance of um, such ultrasound um, system. Of course, we know the unit of density, we know the unit of um, speed. Um, at the end of the day, we are going to have kilograms per meter squared uh, second, and it has a special name, RAL. In a simple sense, impedance can be thought of as the stiffness of a compressible wave. When you have, um, if you tie a, a string to two ends of um, um, a support, uh, the more pressure you use, sorry, the more force you use in tying the, um, the string to the two ends uh, will determine how stiff the rope is going to, uh, to be. The more the energy, the more the, um, um, the tension in the rope, the more the uh, stiffness of the rope. So that can be thought of as the, I mean, as um, the, uh, the impedance of um, such a system. So the more the force, the more the impedance we're going to get. This is just an analogy we are trying to make. So once we so are uh, further looking at the interactions of ultrasound, we have the diagram here. This is uh, the probe. The probe um, sends some uh, ultrasound wave into the body. Uh, some of bits, uh, some of the wave are reflected and some are transmitted via interaction. I mean, sorry, via a refraction. The refraction component is actually the transmitted component where this one is um, reflected and um, a component. We have um, the wave uh, moving from a soft uh, tissue to a muscle. And of course, um, because uh, we have two tissues involved, we are going to have a different um, acoustic um, impedance. Of course, that is why we are going to have a reflection. So reflection of um, sound, of course, uh, when we have an acoustic impedance between uh, two tissues, of course, at a particular bundle. Um, reflection allows us um, to use um, the ultrasound to be able to um, um, listen to the echoes, the reflected wave we have um, gotten. So the reflection, we can, um, the reflection co uh, coefficient is the quantity that tells us the amount of uh, reflection that we get from a particular interface. It is a uh, given by um, uh, Z2 minus Z1, which is the impedance in the first body minus the impedance in the second body all over, the impedance in the second body minus the impedance in the first body. Sorry, this should be the first, multiplied by two. So the greater the amount of um, acoustic impedance between two um, tissues, the more ultrasound energy the body will reflect. Of course, um, it is important for us to note here that if the two objects, sorry, if the two tissues have the same amount of impedance, we are not going to have any reflection from them because um, Z1 and Z2 
will be the same thing, are giving us um, zero. So at the end of the day, the reflection uh, coefficient is then going to be zero. So there should be a kind of um, acoustic impedance uh, difference between uh, two um, layers, between two objects for us to have a um, reflection from a uh, such uh, interface. So furthermore, on the uh, reflective and boundary, we have an incident wave, um, a portion of it transmitted, a portion um, are reflected. We have uh, the impedance of uh, this first um, tissue as um, Z1, which is P1, C1, and the impedance of uh, the second tissue is um, P2, C2. Uh, based on the uh, still on the um, um, on the um, reflection, it is very, very important for us um, to understand um, the issue um, of um, echo, what echo and um, how um, Otrosander uses echo. The greater the impedance between the two tissues surfaces, the greater the reflection, and of course, and hence, the brighter the echo that will appear on the ultrasound. Uh, based on this um, definition, we can broadly group echoes into three groups. The hyperechoic um, surfaces, which appear white on the screen, the hypoechoic, which appear gray on the skin, and the anechoic, which appear black on the screen. In fact, um, it is uh, based on uh, this um, gray scaling that we have, uh, whatever we have, uh, we see on ultrasound. Whatever image we see on ultrasound is um, basically a, um, a, a, a display of um, the echogenicity of um, such um, a structure. So when we have, uh, when you see on your screen, on the ultrasound screen, you see um, an area which is um, white. It means um, we have a greater um, amount of reflection from there. And then um, if we have ones that are dark, it means um, we have a very, very little um, exposure, I mean, a little a reflection from there. So still talking about mountain type of the echoes, it is um, very, very okay, very, very, um, I mean, um, it explains uh, more when we have um, diagrams. We have uh, this um, hypoechoic, of course, it is a structure which uh, we got from um, from a highly reflecting um, um, surface, we are hypoechoic. It's in between an, an echoic um, um, body and then um, a hypoechoic um, body. Very, very dark. Sorry, uh, in between them, um, it has a gray scale. Then the ISO echoic, um, of course, from the word ISO, the same um, echogenicity between the structure and then uh, the surrounding um, tissue. Of course, we have um, the little explanation them um, here. More ecogenic, uh, ecogenic than the surrounding structure for I saw echoic uh, object. They have the thousand and the same ecogenicity at the surrounding um, structures. Then for an echo, you can see it very, very dark. No reflection coming from there. So no internal um, echo. So use of ecogenicity in uh, diagnosing disease. As a medical physicist, it is good for us to understand um, all these um, nitty gritties. And you see, the uh, when we study some of these things, it looks as if um, um, they are studied in, in abstraction. We actually use them. How do we use echogenicity in diagnosis disease? A particular structure is required to, to give us a particular amount of a reflection, uh, hence an echo. A particular echo will be sent by the transducer. When such is um, different, then it um, gives us a um, it is a pointer to a particular thing. Maybe there should be a particular um, issue with that uh, tissue or the tissue is a um, disease. We have in this um, case of um, thyroid um, ultrasound images. Normal thyroid um, ultrasound um, images should have um, this um, an echoic um, structure, an, an echoic um, structure. But when we begin to see it um, this way, when we begin to see it a uh, markedly hypoechoic or um, or just ordinarily hypoechoic or isoechoic, then we begin to, um, the radiologists or the, uh, the physician begin to say, yeah, might be something here. But clearly these two tells us that uh, the uh, mass scene is um, actually malignant, that is a uh, uh, cancerous, where yeah, this one is a uh, benign, and the mass is, has no um, problem at all. So echogenicity can be used in um, diagnosing um, and diseases. Now we'll now look at um, refraction. Refraction is a change in the direction of a transmitted ultrasound energy at a tissue boundary. Mind us, 
when ultrasound, when uh, we talk about a refraction, we actually is as a result of um, a beam that is not a perpendicular at the boundary, or when there is a change in the speed of sound in the media. So this calls for caution whenever we are um, using the ultrasound and proof so that we don't have a refraction artifacts. If we, uh, the radiologist doesn't place uh, the probe um, perpendicularly on the object. For example, look at this. It is not um, um, parallel to the uh, body surface. The body is going to, the, is going to be a refraction, but if um, it is placed um, very, very, but, I mean, uh, perpendicular to the um, tissue, we are not going to have um, any uh, reflection. So that has to be taken by care of. So at times, uh, when we have um, a refraction um, artifacts, we may need to tilt um, the um, transducer again so that it becomes um, um, a parallel to the skin surface. So we have a refraction artifact here. At times, if we have um, a refraction artifact, this is the real um, um, structure, the real um, structure, this is the artifact. I thought you want to look, is this artifact, is this a structure here as a result of artifact or not? So to um, douse our, our, our judgment, I mean, um, to make us um, be sure of uh, what we are talking about, we, it, is, um, it might be very, very useful or uh, um, expected of the radiologist to tilt uh, the, the ultrasound and probe a little bit. If you or she tilts a little bit, and the artifacts uh, disappear then, of course, uh, the radiologists know that um, it was actually an artifact, not um, a structure that um, uh, they will begin to, to query. So refraction can introduce an artifact during the sound imaging, and it might lead to wrong diagnosis um, after all. But at times, uh, this artifact actually helps us in, um, in uh, image analysis. So scattering, scattering refers to the various reflection events that um, waves undergo. Of course, um, um, of course, when we have uh, so many uh, reflection events, we have uh, um, a scattering. And of course, we can, in tissue boundaries, we can have so many scatterers. We have uh, specular um, scatterers that uh, give rise uh, to smooth reflection. And we have uh, non-specular scatterers that give rise to diffuse uh, reflection. And of course, um, well, these um, scatterers, um, play a huge role in the type of um, image uh, we get on our screen. If you have uh, so many non-specular scatterers, of course, uh, and we have uh, this as our proof, and we, mean we have this as our proof, so many of um, the echoes or the reflections uh, won't uh, return to the transducer. And as such, you are going to have a very, very faint um, image on the object. I mean, on our image. I mean, sorry, on our monitor. So it depends on the type of um, scatterers we encounter in the ultrasound encounters as it uh, moves down the body. Then attenuation, of course, as a result of um, all these um, events of um, a reflection, these events of a refraction and um, transmission, the waves continue um, to become uh, weaker and uh, weaker. And of course, um, we can use um, the equation we once uh, stated um, uh, in decibel uh, being the logarithm of um, the transmitted um, intensity over the uh, incident intensity multiplied by 10. From there, we can uh, calculate the amount of attenuation the sound wave has uh, actually gone through. So the more the sound the ultrasound the wave uh, travels inside the body, the weaker it becomes. It is very, very important to also note that uh, these uh, waves will actually return. Let's say we have um, a transmission here. I mean, a reflection here. Or, okay, reflection here. This reflection, this uh, it means the waves are going to travel two times at uh, the distance up to uh, the transducer. So even placing a much more um, uh, placing a body on it. So how are images formed? How are images formed uh, using uh, ultrasound? We have uh, this, uh, this is a very, very wonderful question we have uh, from IGSC. Say, so diagram shows a guy standing at a firework display and there is a cup beaded nearby. When the firework explodes, the guy hears two bands, uh, how many, say, a few seconds apart. How far is the gap from the building? Assuming that the speed of sound in air.
just in the same way, our computer uses um, this our formula to calculate the, the distance of um, objects, um, distance of object from the transducer um, and that displays it on the image. After some machine calculates distances by synthesized image from returning echoes, it needs to determine the distance of reflective um, interfaces from the transducer to form images um, at the appropriate uh, position. Of course, they're using the propagation speed of uh, 1540, 1540 meters per second. That is the speed of um, sound um, is a uh, soft um, tissue. This is, um, of course, um, based on the, this is um, all the three modes of, uh, the three major modes of the um, ultrasound. That is the A mode, and the amplitude mode, the brain mode, which is the brightness mode, and the motion mode. All of them use um, this um, um, formula. Of course, we have so many um, computer algorithms and that I do this and calculation for us. Of course, um, ultrasound um, is um, rich in um, the use of, of um, uh, so many of um, these um, uh, computer um, languages um, in, um, in synthesizing images. So we have uh, the image of a normal fetal phase profile at 20 weeks. Of course, if you look at this, assuming uh, transistor is uh, from here to here, the image here, of course, uh, this structure here is, um, of course, um, um, Hyper echoic, of course, it is a, it is a bright um, with respect to the surrounding. The image here was um, captured uh, before the image here because uh, this image here is a uh, deeper, is a um, shallower than uh, this image here. This image here will be the computer will use um, the distance from here to here to calculate using the speed uh, in um, in a soft tissue 1,540 meters per second to calculate where this image will be plotted. And so on and so forth. So the further you go, the more time it will take for the echo to return here. Hence, um, um, plotting the graph on a on the deeper um, structure. At the end of the day, then also the echogenicity, the amount of reflection from all these um, surfaces will be determined by will determine the amount of whether the image is going to be bright or not. So all these things are synthesized um, by the computer. So why ultrasound? Why do we use ultrasound? Um, we use ultrasound uh, basically for uh, uh, many reasons, but um, notable among uh, those reasons are this. Uh, ultrasound poses no radiation harm to the users. It poses um, no known risk to the patient. It is very, very inexpensive. If you want to compare ultrasound uh, with CT, um, average CT costs around uh, 40,000 naira. But ultrasound, you can have ultrasound as low as um, 2,000, 3,000 and so, so on and so forth. If you want to compare it with MRI, MRI um, takes you around them um, 100K, 100,000 Naira. Of course, you can see uh, why ultrasound has become a very, very choice of imaging and modality um, that, um, of course, um, uh, so many physicians um, um, ask some patients to go and perform. And again, it's very, very portable. Some of our, our equipment are very, very huge. If you go to city, a city is a huge, uh, equipment uh, that um, requires um, a lot of a construction. But uh, ultrasound is not so. This is a very, very portable, very, very portable. So that is why ultrasound can be used in ICUs, intensive care units, it can be used in emergency units, and so on and so forth. And again, these days we have ultrasound that are uh, just like um, uh, normal computers, I mean, sorry, uh, normal um, um, phones in which um, the transistor will just be connected to the, um, um, to the uh, phones via the USB and then the rest will be. So are there dangers with um, um, ultrasound? Do you have any dangers? Though ultrasound poses um, no real danger, but then we have to be very, very careful. That's why PCs um, are always uh, called upon to make sure to check uh, to look at these indices, the thermal index, which um, tells us about um, the heating effect of ultrasound, and the mechanical index, because um, ultrasound can also be used as a therapeutic um, um, means, as a therapeutic agent. Ultrasound can be used um, in crushing and kidney stone. So, as a result of that, we have to be sure that um, the ultrasound machine is um, working at an optimal level. Uh, that is why we use them. We don't use them so much and um, higher uh, um, high frequency because um, they pose them um, some. Uh, um, um, dangers, but yet yeah, they're very, very subtle. So um, at this point, I want to end. Uh, when you 
uh, enjoy a nice visit to the sonographer. So uh, uh, especially some of our, our female, uh, when you eventually um, uh, take in, you'll be asked to visit um, the sonographer for um, the, uh, sorry, for the ultrasound of, of your abdomen. It's going to be a very, very um, wonderful experience. So just um, take your time, relax, and then uh, enjoy the physics um, of ultrasound. So thank you very much. You actually made my day.